What was that experience that felt like it just couldn't get any worse but somehow did? I was getting ready to jump in the shower to go work for a few hours when I heard a knock on the door. I went and answered it into my amazement. There were a bunch of cops outside. They told me they had a complaint of loud noise and possibly domestic violence. I just laughed and said no, that's not here as I live alone. One of them asked me if I had any ID on me so they could go about their business. My wallet was on the wall right by the door and so I pulled my ID out and handed it to one of the officers. He looked at it and asked me if I could step outside again. I kind of chuckled and said, yeah, no problem. As soon as I stepped out of the door of my house, the other officer said, turn around, put your hands behind your back. I looked at him. Kind of funny. What for? I said turn around. So I turned around. I put my hands behind my back. Suddenly I felt handcuffs as they set me down in front of the house on my bench. I asked one of the other officers what this was all about. He said there's a warrant out for your arrest. Now, mind you, I've never been in any kind of trouble at all in my life. And so again I kind of chuckled. I said, what kind of warrant? I don't know. It's from out of state now. I'm starting to get a little freaked out, so the officer leads me into the car. All I have is my gym shorts, flip-flops and my cell phone. That, of course was taken from me as we're driving to the jail. About 45 minutes later I asked the officer what this is all about. He said, I really don't know. It's an out-of-state warrant and we've got to take you to jail. And it looks like there's a no-bond clause on this warrant. This means until I figure out what this is, I'm stuck there. I was put into a holding cell with about 15 gang members in Fort Lauderdale Broward County Jail. At about 11.00 that night I was transferred to a holding jail. I was then given a 2-inch mattress and a blanket and told to go to sleep on the floor. At this point I've asked probably 4 or 5 officers what's going on and nobody seems to know. I haven't seen an attorney and I don't have any telephone numbers memorized. So the next day I asked an officer again, what's going on and how do I find out? He comes back and simply says it's an out-of-state warrant. You'll have to wait to see the judge. I asked for access to my cell phone so I can find some numbers and call somebody. At that point they told me they won't let me unless there's a court order. Here's where it gets really bad. I don't see a judge for 8 days. Yep, you heard that right. I'm 8 days in jail not having any idea why, not seeing an attorney and having no access to call anyone. I finally see a judge on the 8th day and he tells me it's an out-of-state warrant and again, he doesn't know what it's for. And I have a choice. I can fight the warrant or I can concede to it. If I fight, I'm going to probably be there for 60 days minimum and possibly be let out. If I concede, I could be there another 45 days before they take me to the other state. So I conceded and I asked him for the court order to access my phone. The judge says he's never heard of having to have a court order to access a cell phone, but reluctantly gives one. On the ninth day when I asked to access my phone again, I'm told that they're not going to allow me even though they have a court order because the phone battery is dead. Now I don't know what to do. This is the ninth day. 9 turns into 1010, turns into 1111, turns into 12 and so on. No one in the world knows where I am. I'm assuming my kids probably think I'm deceased as they live in another state. Finally, on the 23rd day, North Carolina, the state which has a warrant for my arrest, shows up to take me during this 48-hour trip where I'm shackled hand and foot in the back of a van. I finally convinced one of the officers that is driving to access their Facebook account and message a friend of mine to try to get a phone number. On the 25th day in North Carolina, I finally found out what the charge is. A former client of mine from four years prior in a business that I sent signed over to another partner, accused me of taking $20,000 and fleeing the state. I laughed again, but not hard this time because this was getting real. As I'm booked into their jail, I'm trying to figure out what to do. The next day I finally saw an attorney. He doesn't have too much information for me, but tells me what the charge entails and what the possibilities are for sentencing and things like that. A few days later he comes back with what they call discovery, which is evidence on me from the district attorney side. As we went through that, I found no evidence at all pointing to any kind of criminal activity to me, which of course I knew because I hadn't done anything. However, I did find a receipt from an unknown company that was in my former partner's handwriting and had his home address as the address for the unknown company. The amount received was $12,000. I told my attorney what I found and then was escorted back to my cell. Days and weeks go by, no news at all. They demanded $25,000 in cash in order to release me, or I was just stuck there. I had access to no money at all. On about the 44th day I woke up with some pain. Looks like I had caught an infection and it was in my right nut. I had no way to contact a nurse except to put it on a message board requesting medical attention. There was no medical that day or the next. Six days later I saw a nurse after I told them through the message that had gone into my ear. She gave me one antibiotic pill that day and told me I would get another the next day. On the 51st day in the second jail, I saw my attorney and he told me at this point the DA is not going to offer a plea bargain because the evidence against you doesn't make sense. However, there is a possibility that there will be a plea bargain offer, but it probably won't be for about six months. If I plead not guilty, it may be another six months to a year before there is a trial. At this point, I just told my attorney that we need to speak to the DA. He doesn't have time to do that. No problem. Give me the name of the DA and the telephone number and I'll do it. Something amazing happened at that point. The next morning my attorney arrived and told me I was getting out that day. The state released me on my signature with no money involved. So I left North Carolina on a Thursday evening and had to take a train back to South Florida. I got home Friday night. My car had been repossessed, the companies that I have done business with had cancelled contracts, and one had even charged me back almost $75,000. But at least I had a place to stay. 
Today is July 22nd, almost two years from the arrest, and the case still hasn't been closed. I've been told over and over that they're going to dismiss the charges, but they haven't done that as of yet. I can't believe this is happening.